Hello and welcome to the Amateur Radio and Amateur Satellite Chat. Hello, my name is Carl. For those of you who are new to the channel, my call sign is 2 Echo Zero, Echo Zulu Tango. That means I'm a amateur radio licensed operator. So that means that I am, I am in the middle of the licensing system, working my way up to being advanced license. <clears throat> so this channel is mainly focused on getting out of the radio, out portable. It focuses on uh, military radios, uh, amateur radios, HF, VHF radio. And also I like to work with the SatNogs, amateur satellite system. So the midweek chat tends to focus on uh, what's coming up, uh, what, I'm, what I'm doing at the moment, and also um, the conversations we're having in, in, in this particular channel as well. Um, over the next couple of Sundays, I have a couple of videos that are ready to, almost ready to go out. I've um, been out to um, trying to find a decent piece of woodland so that I can uh, get out for either a quick day camp with... Um, um, a bit of bushcraft um, with a hammock, tarp, uh, and HF radio and VHF radio. So there's a couple of videos coming out where I've started to try to find a regular spot that I can go out to quite simply. So somewhere that I can drive to within the hour and within another half an hour or hours walking, I can get to a spot. So this will be somewhere where I can get out to and do HF radio, VHF. I can do an overnight camp as well. Uh, I've just started to piece together a backpackable NOAA satellite, weather satellite um, tracking and decoding uh, setup. So I've got myself a turnstile antenna. Uh, I've got a decoder that I had a couple of years ago uh, and a very small laptop. So with the laptop, the, the decoder and the turnstile, all of that should fit inside a backpack with a HF radio or a VHF and the HF radio and some wire. So hopefully that plus the camping gear uh, should all fit inside a decent a decent uh, quality backpack so over the past few weeks I've had the two minute tips um, videos I did three of them initially uh, is that for three I just wanted to see how they went down and what sort of um, uh, feedback I got from those videos and it's been it's been positive we've had quite a few uh, people go into these videos so I'm going to do another three videos I, um, I've got some ideas what I want to cover in them, but please can you drop in the comments below some topics that I can, <clears throat> I can cover in these very short, very quick two minute tips. And these are for people that are considering to, to take up amateur radio. So there's people that maybe haven't yet got the license or are just about to get the license. We just want to, there's lots of videos out there that can be quite in depth, but I wanted just something to just rip rapid two minute tips for them to just try and learn a little bit from those people that have already been through that phase. So as an intermediate operator, I can still remember, it's only two years ago, I can still remember the sort of things that I was doing at that point and some of the decisions I was making. I just wanted to, you know, just try and uh, pass something back there. So I'll do those over the next couple of weeks, uh, finding the time even just to do a series of three minute videos. Uh, it's just, I just need to find the time, get it written up and then do the videos and edit them and get them out. So look out for them in the next few weeks. <clears throat> um, over the next um, few weeks as well, I'll be taking out the Klansmans again. I had a great time with the 352. I took that up to some high ground. There's a video which I'll put a link to where I built a antenna for six meters. Uh, I got the Soto Beams Tactical Mini, which is a great six meter, it's a six meter um, mast that's backpackable. I would say that the Soto Beams Tactical Mini is good for VHF um, uh, operation. I wouldn't say it's good for HF because six meters is not going to give you much clearance off the ground. So uh, I'm quite interested in the, there's a, a, a DX Commander Expedition 
which I think goes to 10 meters. So uh, I've got my eye on that as well. So hopefully uh, I'll be able to uh, have a um, one that I can just take out for six, you know, have one that's already ready to go out for six and then one uh, um, for, H, for VHF and another one that to go out for HF as well. Because with both of those antennas, what I may need to do is um, either buy the spreaders and all the gear that DX comes with or with the soda beams, I might have to just make up my own lot of spreaders and uh, make up some sort of um, multi-band VHF um, antenna set, set up with the soda beams tactical. So all that's got to come up. Um, I'm going to be building a two meter uh, antenna soon, but I want to build a, a horizontal, an omnidirectional horizontal antenna that I can try and get up on some trees. So as I lift it up, it it takes off like a spaceship and it gives me some sort of omnidirectional um, capability as well for SSB on two meters. So I've, I've, I'll, I'll go into a bit more detail about that when all the parts arrive. Uh, I need to scratch my head and start to try and build it. You know, so um, that'll be interesting. Um, Satnogs. Okay, so this week has been really interesting on the Satnogs program. Um, I've discovered that when you get into the Satnogs, it's a really fantastic project because it really tests your ability to uh, piece all the gear together and understand how to connect and connect your system to a, a global network of Satnogs um, uh, stations. And you tend to collect a lot of data and that data is then sent to a, a database, a cloud-based database, which is open source. So then you can look at, you can access the data, the satellite, um, the, the people who run the satellites themselves can use that data, even from the, the central database. They might have their own data that they're collecting, but they can have this sort of global network that's always listening as their satellites are, are, are um, navigating and um, orbiting the, the planet. So it's great because then you get lots of data. Some of this data is decoded directly inside your software. So you can see, on, like with the uh, NOAA satellites or with the SSTV, you can get some gratification that as it's decoded, you see the images or you can see some data. However, a lot of this data is just passed and not decoded uh, locally uh, on your system. However, the Satnogs uh, chaps themselves have now worked with a system called Grafana, which is a, um, it's a community information dashboards uh, system. So th this now connects up to the main databases where the Satnogs data is held and you can start to build, uh, you turn some of that data that, that into information. So you have information dashboards that can be based on telemetry of the, the satellites or even the experimental data. So a lot of these satellites are running ex science, science experiments so this data can now be turned into graphs and charts and, and all sorts. So it's a fantastic move for the Satnogs community. And I encourage anybody that is either interested in amateur satellite work or just interested in data and dashboards to explore the uh, Satnogs uh, data dashboards. I'll put all the links below as, as, as usual but it's really worth having a look. So uh, I've started to try to build my own, um, a couple of uh, dashboards based on two, um, two satellites that are currently orbiting. And one thing that this does encourage, and I, I've discovered this week by doing that, is that actually it really uh, hones your interest in to specific satellites. If the data is available, you can actually go and actually look at their satellite's website and it will tell you how that data is interpreted so that you can use their calculations to turn that data into meaningful information that's displayed on the dashboards. So it's well worth having a look. Uh, links are below. It's for the Satnogs uh, and Grafana um, uh, uh, dashboards. So definitely a fantastic... Um, a, a fantastic um, a, a update from their system. 
Right, okay, so um, this week two meters has been very exciting. We've had some uh, tropo um, propagation. Uh, the weather conditions have been very stable. Um, uh, we've had a fantastic week weather-wise in the UK. And um, I'll just move that a little bit. Uh, and therefore, um, it's provided the, the real good conditions for um, some tropospheric propagation. So I picked this up using APRS. I had APRS just um, running at the back of the, the radio room on the Kenwood on the THD74. I had that just picking up just some more local activity and then it just went crazy. It was absolutely crazy. Lots and lots of beacons coming in. So when I uh, connected the uh, THD74, you can connect it to um, your your own phone or even uh, through a software on the computer and you can map out where these beacons are and I noticed that the the distance that I was receiving these beacons was was fantastic so there's a bit more activity still to be had this week on the two meters so it's really worth uh, keeping an eye on uh, when you know when these conditions happen uh, it's, it's great fun to get out with the radio and uh, get some long distance in there. So that was really fun. I, during this week as well, I uh, I tried out a, a, a data mode. Is it a data mode? But I tried out a mode called Hellscriber at Feld Hell. Um, it was one of the modes that was mentioned. Um, I did a video co a couple of weeks ago where I talked about um, modes that are lesser used. Uh, a lot of people are flocking to uh, FT8 and some are flocking to JS8 but I wanted to look at some of these other modes so two of them that that stood out was Feld Hell because it just sounds great anyway and the history of Hell Scriber is very interesting uh, and then the PSK31 because that's still more accessible to people there's still people using that so I've been using Feld Hell, PSK31 and a little bit of uh, um, Ritty RTTY. Um, however, with the Feld Hell, I uh, set up um, using the um, Ham Radio Deluxe. I used their digital uh, system. And within 30 seconds of putting the CQ call out on Feld Hell, I got a QSO. It was fantastic, so I managed to record that as well. So I'll uh, I'll play that back while we're talking now. But um, I managed to get a a a, a QSO a two way contact, which was fantastic with a with a, a German station with a German chap. Um, but since then, I've had zero contacts. So um, I've been putting out CQ calls all during the week. I've been researching uh, for nets that 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 sometimes tend to run uh, mostly down on 80 meters because the the, um, the, the, the conditions. However, um, I've been trying 40 and 80, so there's nothing as yet. However, if anybody wants to arrange a SCED, please make a comment below and I'm more than happy to arrange and see if we can try and have a conversation, a, a QSO on Feld Hell, it's really interesting. So I'll be playing more of that this week. I'll be trying a bit more PSK31 uh, and a little bit of Ritty as well. So I'll continue with those modes for a bit. Uh, they're, they're very interesting. Uh, okay, so I just want to uh, now, this is the fun bit of the midweek chat, is just to go over some of the comments. So um, I've had some great comments again this week. So thanks everybody for sending these in. It really helps to have the conversations and to have um, the feedback on the channel so uh, I'll just read some of these out uh, so Steve um, I checked the top section of your Soto Beams Tactical Mini it is I believe supposed to be hollow all the way through on one of the videos that I did I think it was the last one when I was out with the clansmen I showed the, um, the, the end um, section of the Tactical Mini and it, it was blocked off um, so last night when I received this uh, comment, I actually poked and prodded with it, something like a needle and it pushed all the rubbish out and it's actually, you can blow down it. So the, the Soto Beams Tactical Mini is hollow all the way through. 
So whereas on the video I said that the last section was solid, it's not. So thank you Steve for that. Um, DX, yeah, cheers Carl, this is a great idea actually, that um, the expedition, expedition model that, that uh, Carl's developed is more, I think more for HF, so it is longer, it's 10 metres, whereas the 6 metre tactical mini, I would say that I'm just going to concentrate on that on VHF, so I'm, I'm interested in this expedition model, but some of the, some of the plates might fit between the two, so I... It would be interesting. What I might do, Cal, is actually send you the um, dimensions of the tactical uh, mini, um, of some of the pieces. I'll try and measure them ooh, as best I can, and um, uh, hopefully the plates might fit. Um, however, with the if I'm using the tactical mini for VHF, and uh, I, I need to get the wires as high as possible, so the it means that the radiator plate will need to set up quite high. But we'll, we'll, we'll tackle all that when we come to it. Um, uh, John, if you fancy ranging is scared for six metres, give me a shout. Absolutely, mate. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm going to rip taking out the radios. Um, more backpackable Klansman. Um, but I'm also going to do a, um, a... I'm going to take VHF and HF Klansmans out with me. Uh, I'll operate from within the car somewhere, so I'll be setting up maybe out the boot of the car, maybe with a tent next to the car, I'm not sure yet, but I'm going to be looking at using uh, VHF and HF and set up a full station with the Klansmans. Um, uh, Stein, uh, thanks for sharing the quick tips. Uh, yeah, New Ham, um, future video would be benefits to using different bands, days and times, night bands, grey line bands, yeah, okay. Yeah, I can do that in two minutes. Um, but yes, yeah, you need being able to understand what bands to work when would be really interesting. Sometimes um, it's all, also when people talk about dead bands, all oh, the bands dead. Don't I don't, I don't bother with that band is dead. Sometimes you can get some surprises as well. So um, it's it's even though there's science involved, it's sometimes a bit of um, a serendipity as well. So um, science and serendipity. Um, yeah, uh, uh, M6 uh, OPV. Well done, Carl. Please for you. Persevere's paid off. Yes, welcome to the club. Yes, actually, uh, cheers, Paul. The this is a key point I wanted to make. Actually, is that with the hobby, perseverance actually really pays off eventually. So, um, I, I know that uh, quite a number of people into the hobby they want to have when they go and and you know go on the radio they want to make lots and lots and lots of dx contacts and a big list of contacts i'm, I'm slightly different than that i i'm more i'm happy to know that i can get out the challenge to get out of the radios and get up to some sort of muddy hill somewhere and just make one contact um or make no contacts but try again and try and alter the conditions and alter the antenna and alter the wires and and think a bit differently about how to operate and get that one contact in uh, for me that 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 really pays off that that for me that's the the uh, enjoyment i get from the hobby if i was after lots and lots of contacts i wouldn't get up on the hill i'd want to use lots of power and get on a and a weak signal mode uh, to get lots of people into the log so just sources for courses really that's just my you know, my particular view on that i i yes my challenges uh, are, are maybe different than some other people's but perseverance really pays off and that's true paul so thank you very much so uh, there's plenty of other comments but please get keep them coming in uh, if you enjoy uh, this uh, channel if you're not already subscribed can you please su uh, press that subscribe button <clears throat> give me a, a thumbs up or a thumbs down but please tell me why uh, keep the comments coming in keep the feedback coming in it really helps uh, we're nearly at 900 subscribers to the channel hopefully within the next couple of weeks we'll hit that thousand mark i need to, i need to do something special for a thousand so um any comments on that that'd be appreciated but i, put, I won't go naked and i won't sing um so uh, okay happy radio folks and uh, look forward to the next video so uh, bye bye for now